between 700 million and 800 million children living in poverty across the globe. The majority of those children are not accessing a reasonable education. There are 250 million children who are in school today. They're not out of school. They're in a classroom with a teacher. Yet they're still functionally illiterate and enumerate. And more than 150 million of those same children have been in school for four or more years. There's nothing more depressing as a child than to be in a space where you're sent to every day, and yet you know nothing's gonna happen for you. You know whatever that space is, isn't gonna give you the tools you need to change your life. Bridge wants to change that. In 2007, we came to Africa where due diligence had showed us that there were an incredibly high number of enrolled children who were still illiterate upon graduation. And was there a possible business model that could solve this? Was there something that could be done, even though people said there wasn't anything that could be done? But if you go direct to that family who needs a service, and you figure out what their problem is, and you create that service, and then you could have a business because you can charge them the fee that's affordable for their current income levels and change their life and their children's lives. We all moved to Nairobi in 2008 and within uh, six months we had the first school up and running. We started in Kenya because this seemed the right place to start. It had the population density we were looking for, it had a neutral regulatory environment, it had people we could hire into our head office support staff who could help us build out the business. From the very beginning, Bridge was never designed to be one school or two schools or ten schools even, but that if you wanted to make the types of investments in teacher training, in content, to publish your own materials, uh, to create your own technology, to to leverage all of that over a fairly large geographic space, that you could never do that for one school if you were serving a parent who lived in poverty. Part of the core of starting any business is you better know your customer really well. So well that even when everyone else says, oh, no one's gonna pay for that, you better know that they are and that they will, and like, what's your add-on that's gonna change this? In the first couple years, one of the biggest difficulties was convincing investors that there's something there to invest in. And I think often um, investment professionals, honestly, have never spent time living in an impoverished person's household, particularly in a developing country where they live in a tin shack and the toilet's like 200 meters down the road and they're reusing oil for three weeks. You know, they just don't know that life. And so it's about being able to communicate that to them. How can you convince them of your knowledge of the product and the market while making sure that they know that they could make a return? Because if you can't help them make a return, you're not starting a business. So you have to make sure you have that all kind of locked up at the beginning. So one of the ways we first tried to get our investors to understand what we were doing was by calling it a school in a box, and then when we realized everyone here calls a private school that's good an academy, an academy in the box, was to help our investors understand that you could scale education. Because one of the early questions was, oh, how do you scale education? Isn't that a one-off? Isn't it just a teacher in a classroom? So don't you have to have brilliant teachers in every room in order to have a well-educated child? Because honestly, that's uh, that's how a wealthy person would think of it. Honestly, that's an incredibly luxurious way of approaching education and is why there hasn't been extensive education reform in the developing world. So we decided to use what's called um, teacher guidelines, where you prepare heavily scripted instruction for the teacher that they then present to the child. Ceremony means actions that are performed according to tradition 
What word means actions that are done according to tradition? Ceremony! So the teacher doesn't have to spend all of that time preparing for tomorrow. It's done for them by what we call master teachers, which is essentially an internal publishing house. Make a rectangle that is two by six like the one I have done on my geo board. We take the, the teacher textbook and then we actually draw that down using best practices, research that's already been published about what helps children learn and not learn, and we write a script, like a play. I will not attend my friend's graduation because I am not feeling well. Everyone. So the teacher has the actual words that they're going to read, the problems they're going to put up on the board, the examples they're going to give to the child. We support our teachers so that they know tomorrow is covered, and the next day is covered, and next week it is covered, and I can trust that I'll be giving my children the best content, which enables me to be more responsive in the times where the teacher and the child are interacting one-on-one -on -one and in small groups. We together. Remember, you say that the longer hard, the minute hard is here, the longer hard. Then the, our hard is hard. Bridge uses its comprehensive system to manage the, all the academies in Kenya. All teachers use their teacher computers. Also, those teacher computers, they use them to mark their attendance when they come to the school. Also, these pupils, their attendance are taken in those teacher computers. Now when they come in the morning, they do what we call syncing, using the smartphone. We as the academy managers normally use the smartphone to guide, to guide us how to operate in the academy. Every teacher has their teacher IDs to log in. So when they log in, they shall be able to view their classes and they shall open the, the topics or the lessons to teach. So they be, every time every teacher is using the computer, following it 100%. Now when they sing their teacher computers, it means that all the information that they have been carrying out in their various classes, it means that it, sh it shall be captured at our headquarter. So we're tracking, you know, 3,500 to 4,000 teachers every day. You can see here we have a list of all of the teachers. We also have two-way communication where will sync the smartphone with the NOOC. The NOOC will also sync back with the smartphone to let us know that all the data uh, has been received on the NOOC. We will know that the teacher did have a script as of 8 o'clock this morning, and then this data gets pushed live back from the smartphone four times a day to our server, and I can pull the report on the server um, to demonstrate which teachers do and which teachers do not have scripts can't have a brilliant teacher hypothesis and expect to change the education for hundreds of millions of children. You have to be able to upskill the teachers that would be available within the same community as your child. How are you going to get tens of thousands, eventually hundreds of thousands of teachers to be working with hundreds of millions of impoverished children? They need to be from the same community. They need to face similar challenges, but also economically, they need to be part of the same economy. Basically, most of our parents are living in uh, two dollars uh, below two dollars a day, and um, this small amount they try also to keep aside for their kids as fees. Because for us, we are really low cost. We charge roughly like uh, five dollars a month. Teachers are employed from their various communities, so we recruit, we train them, we bring them back to teachers. I'd say between 2011 and 2012, it became clearer to more investment professionals that, wait, there really does seem to be a market for this. There is a market for this. There are people paying for this service. There's a great demand for this. It was not social impact investors who were interested. It was straight commercial capital who saw like, wow, there are a couple billion people who don't 
have anyone selling them what they want. And then 2012 onward was our real scale it. Things are basically working. Like we know the education outcomes are working. Those are being measured by a third party every year. That's being radically successful. The operations still have lots of tweaks they need, but they're working well enough that it makes sense to now blow the business out a little bit more. Like the stage we're at now is where it's much more hired, hard to hire people. So to hire people who can grow as quickly as the business can grow. Right? And I think that's one of the difficult things a lot of people don't talk about with like really rapidly growing companies is the human capital or human talent arena and how to both better hire for it, how to better manage it, how to better manage that growth that each person's going to need and to manage exits gracefully. Now that we're, we'll be at a little over 400 locations in Kenya in January, we're at the point where we're already laying the groundwork to expand outside of Kenya in 2015 and 2016. We'll be launching between 15 and 25 locations in Uganda. We're also already underway for operations in Nigeria. So our first locations in Nigeria will be in Lagos. So we will continue expanding. You know, our overall goal you know, that we establish and we talk about publicly is to reach 10 million children by 2025. And that sounds crazy, maybe, but even on our current pace, we double enrollment every year. We're at 100,000 now, we'll be at 200,000, 400,000, 800,000. And I think we'll start growing even more quickly as we expand into new markets. But what's sad is that even when we reach, in today's population, 10 million children, we'll only be serving one and a half percent of the children living in poverty who need this type of education service. 10 million is nothing compared to the global demand. There needs to be more people trying to solve the problems of why children aren't learning today. It shouldn't just be bridge.